Hello, Goody Lemons. Today we are hmm, going to do some really interesting and beautiful maths with problems around um, working with your sequences and series, but we are going to be using simultaneous equations in order to solve our problems. All right, so obviously the best way to get stuck in is to do some examples. Let's go. Great, so let's have a look at our first example. Determine the first three terms of an arithmetic sequence. If term 5, so that's why I just did T5, right? Term 5 is equal to 12, and term 14 is equal to negative 33. Oh my goodness. So what you can imagine happening here is you'll have term 1, right? So term 1... Then term 2, term 3, term 4. We get to term 5. All right, so we know that the value of term 5, the question told me it is 12. Then I've got to keep going. I've got term 6. Right, I'm going to keep going. And I get to... <laughs> my cat, sorry. Okay, let's keep going. Um, so we get to term 13. And then they say that term 14 is negative 33. Okay, and the pattern keeps going. So I'm sure you're realizing the problem here is usually if you needed, well, we know that term 1 is just A. And to figure out the constant difference, I'd be going term 2 minus term 1 is equal to term 3 minus term 2, right? Um, so what am I going to do if I don't know what term 1 and term 2 is? Hmm. Well, that's why we need to do this simultaneous equation story, right? So that was a weird um, pointer. <laughs> um, okay, so let's get stuck in. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to remind you. So term 1, remember, is A. Term 2 is A plus 1 constant difference. Term 3 is A plus 2 constant differences. Term 4 is A plus 3 constant differences. So another way of writing term 5, right? Term 5, which they said was 12. Another way of writing this is A plus Four constant differences would be equal to 12. And I'm going to make A the subject of the formula here. Okay. So, remember, term 1 is A. Term 2 is A plus a constant difference. Term 3, A plus 2 constant differences. So, you'll notice that the coefficient of D, the constant difference, is always one less then the position of the term. So term 3 is a plus 2d. Term 5 was a plus 4d. So tell me how you're going to write term 14 then. So term 14, they said was negative 33. So 14, the coefficient of d must be 1 less than the position of the term. So a plus 13 constant differences gives you term 14, which is negative 33. And I'm going to make A the subject of the formula. So that's going to be negative 33 minus 13D. So do you see here that I've created two equations, which means I can now solve simultaneously. So I'm going to let equation 1 equal equation 2. So 12 minus 4D is equal to negative 33 minus 13d. All right, let's solve for d. Um, so 9d will be equal to negative 45. Oh, amazing. I'm going to divide both sides by 9. So your constant difference is negative 5. Um, and that looks good because you can see that this was a positive integer and it became a negative integer. So we're clearly subtracting. So that makes perfect sense. So now that you know what D is, it becomes very easy to solve for A, right? Let's get rid of that. Whoop. Goodbye. 
right? To solve for A, you now just simply substitute back into either one of your two equations because now you know what D is. All right, so therefore, A will be equal to, you can pick either of the two. I'm going to choose the first one. 12 minus 4 times negative 5, which is equal to 12 plus 20. So term 1 is 32, and your constant difference is negative 5, right? The question said, what are the first three terms? So term 1 is 32. Term 2 will be 32 minus 5, so 27. And term 3 will be 27 minus 5, which is 22. All right. So, hooray. I've answered the question. You got it. Okay. So, what was really important here is this knowledge of how can I rewrite a term hey, if, I, if I don't actually know um, the value of the terms that came before it or after it, right? Setting up your question like this, we clearly see then that we can solve for our two unknown variables. Remember, when you have two unknown variables, that's also a clear indication that we want to use simultaneous equations. So I made my two equations. I made A the subject of the formula. Um, you could also do elimination here to solve, but I just make A the subject of the formula. Let them equal each other and solve for D. Once I have D, I can then sub in to solve for A. Cool. Let's look at another example. All right, let's have a look at our second exercise, um, exercise um, example. I'm going to be doing exercises soon enough. Determine the first three terms of the geometric sequence where term 7 is 1, 4, 5, 8, and term 4 is 54. So important information here. It's geometric, so not same, same as the previous one, right? Previous example, our pattern was arithmetic. This pattern is geometric. Um, so we can begin with that same setup of saying, okay, well, I don't know what term one is or term two or term three. We do, however, know the value of term four is 54. Then I don't know term five, term six, but I do know the question told me that the value of term seven is one, four, five, eight. Okay. So we want to set up something similar to example one, but now thinking about what do I know regarding geometric sequences? Well, I know that term one is A. Term two is A times your constant ratio. Term three is A times your constant ratio twice. Term 4 is A times your constant ratio three times. All right, and so we keep going. And what you should notice is the number in the exponent, all right? The number in the exponent is one less than the position of your term, okay? So when it was the arithmetic sequence, term 1 was A, Term 2 was a plus 1d. Term 3 was a plus 2d, right? The coefficient of d was 1 less than the position of the term. Now, in geometric sequences, we've got the same thing happening, right? Just that we're working now with our constant ratio, not the constant difference. So our constant ratio r, and the exponent is 1 less than the position of your term. So let's just quickly think about why this is true. If you think about the nth term, right, the general term for geometric sequence, it's Tn equals A times R to the power of N minus 1. Okay, so that N minus 1 in the exponent, that should now make sense. Why the exponent is 1 less than the position of the term because you're subtracting that 1 over there, okay? And the similar idea is happening, happening in arithmetic sequences. All right, but now let's actually get stuck in. We need to try and solve for A and R so that we can get our first three terms. So let's start off with how am I going to write 
term 7 is equal to 1458. All right. So I know that A times R to the power of 6 is equal to 1458. Remember, it's 1 less... Um, the value of the exponent is one number less than the position of your term. If I had to write down term 4, which they told me was 54, well, that would be a r. What's the exponent? Cubed. Right, the exponent is going to be 3. Exponent is one less than the position of the term. And that equals 54. Okay, so... Now, I know you're going to be thinking, um, let's make A the subject of the formula, same as we did before, etc. No, I'm going to show you something easier to do. All right. So there's a reason why I chose to put the bigger exponent on top. Because what we're actually going to do here is we are going to divide these two um, equations that we've set up. So the reason why we divide is because when you divide, these a's cancel each other out. Then r to the 6 divided by r to the power of 3, that would just be r cubed. All right? Then I just need to figure out what is 1458 divided by 54. All right, that equals 27. Okay, so in the previous example... When we were doing the arithmetic sequences, we made A the subject of the formula and we equated, equated the two equations and we solved for D. Then we could find A. In the geometric sequence, we are going to divide the two equations and so that we can solve for R. Now that I've got R cubed is equal to 27, you're going to cube root both sides, right? So we're going to cube root both those numbers, I mean both those terms, so therefore the cube root of 27 is 3. So to solve for A, we can just pop this now um, back into either one of these equations. Hey, it doesn't matter which one you choose, we're going to get to the same answer. Um, so I guess I'll pick the second one since that number 54 is, 54 is smaller. So if A R cubed gives me 54, Okay, so I'm subbing into the second equation that we made. So if I wanted to solve for A now, A is going to be 54 divided by 27. So A is equal to 2. Okay, now we can actually say what our pattern is. Remember, the question was, um, what are the first three terms? So now I can actually answer the question. So therefore, we've got that term 1 which is A, will be 2. Term 2 will be AR, so 2 times 3. And term 3 will be AR squared, so 2 times 3 times 3, which is going to be 18. All right, so there are your first three terms. And, oh, my goodness, a question that looked kind of hectic to start off with, we actually see is pretty easy. Okay, cool. Let's get on to our next example. All right, let's have a look at this one. Okay, the constant ratio of a geometric series. So that's very important. Series. A series is different to a sequence, right? Is negative 5 over 2. So it's a negative 2.5. The sum of the first four terms is 87 over 5. Find the value of term 1. All right. So, again, an different, a different approach to what we've done in the previous two examples. They speak about a geometric series. Okay. So, what's the formula when you are summing a geometric sequence, right? So, you're creating the series. So, Sn is equal to A. R to the N minus 1 over r minus 1. All right, so this is the formula that we use when we are summing a geometric series. Um, they told us that r is negative 5 over 2, okay? Then they say the sum of the first four terms, okay? So let's just think, what do we, what do we know? Okay, we know they spoke about 
four terms, so we know that n is four, and that if you sum those four terms, you get 87 over five. So I kind of hope you see where I'm going here. At this stage now, we can literally sub these into their variables in this equation. So Sn would be your S4, right? So when you're summing those four terms, you're getting 87 over 5. A is what we're trying to find. Your constant ratio is negative 5 over 2 to the power of 4, right? Remember we said we're summing four terms, right? So we're going to have negative 5 over 2 to the power of 4 minus 1 over negative 5 over 2 minus 1. Okay, so actually this one's a lot less work compared to the other two. We're literally just subbing into this formula. All right, but now obviously we need to simplify and solve for A. So this is going to become negative 3.5 or negative 7 over 2. We're going to multiply both sides by that. And then I'm going to divide both sides by this bracket. Okay. Um, I'm just going to add in a step here where I simplify everything. All right. So this is equal to A. On my calculator now, I'm just going to simplify negative 5 over 2 to the power of 4 minus 1. So that I just punch into my calculator. And I get 609 over 16. And we divide that by negative 7 over 2. All right, we already said that this becomes negative 7 over 2. Okay, so now I'm going to multiply 87 over 5 by negative 7 over 2. And I'm going to, that gives me negative 609 over 10 is equal to A times 609 over 16. All right, so you really don't have to do as many steps as I'm doing now. Um, but I'm just showing everybody, like, what my process is here. Now we need to divide both sides by the 609 over 16. All right, so when I divide both sides by 609 over 16, I get that A is equal to negative 8 over 5. So the question was, find the value of term 1. All right, and we just did over here. Amazing. So actually, I think this question is simpler compared to example one and two. Um, you just have to, what's going to be difficult? Making sure that you pick the correct formula. But the question is telling you what to do. Geometric and series. When I say series, I'm talking about summing. I even then use the word sum later on in the question. Okay, so the question is really guiding you here. Um, so don't get caught up and use the incorrect formula. Your question is going to tell you which formula you need to use. All right, last one to wrap this all up. Let's have a look in an arithmetic sequence. Okay, so they first start talking about a sequence where the 11th term is 32. So before I even keep reading, I'm going to write down, okay, so it's a sequence. So if term 11 is 32 and the sequence is arithmetic, A plus 10D equals 32. All right. So if you're, they tell you that it's arithmetic, we know we're talking about the constant difference. And if it's a sequence, we can use this idea of the A plus 10D. Remember, the coefficient of D is one less than the position of the term. Okay. So we've dealt with that information. The sum of the first 11 terms is 187. So now they're talking about summing. So now we know it's a series. Good. So we know that S11, the sum of the first 11 terms is 187. Okay, so how are we going to write this? So remember that when you are summing, right, you're working out the sum of an arithmetic um, pattern. We use that formula, Sn is equal to n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1 times d. So we know that um, Sn, S11, is 187, and that is equal to n over 2, 11 over 2, 
2a plus n minus 1, so it's 11 terms, times your constant difference, which we don't know. So simplifying this, I get 187 is equal to 5 and a half. Um, I'm just going to use a round bracket. 2a plus 10d. What do you think you should do here? Um, we can divide both sides by 5 and a half. So 187 divided by 5 and a half is 34. So if 34 is equal to 2a plus 10d. Cool. So now we've actually set up two equations, right? Here I've got equation 1 using the information about term 11 being 32. And here I now have equation 2. Using the sum formula for an arithmetic series and simplifying, I get 34 is equal to 2a plus 10d. All right, so how you solve here is up to you. You can do the elimination method because the coefficients of d are the same, or we can just do the method that we are used to doing. Um, so I'm going to make, hmm, I'll make a the subject of the formula in both. So a is going to be equal to 32 minus 10d. All right, so I'm just rewriting my equations. And for the second one, so that was that equation over there. For this one, I'm also going to make a the subject of the formula. So 2a will be equal to 34 minus 10d. So A would be 17 minus 5D. All right. So I just made A the subject of the formula there. Remember, we had to divide through by 2. Now I can let these two equations equal each other. So 32 minus 10D is going to be equal to 17 minus 5D. Negative 5D will be equal to negative um, 17 minus 32 is negative 15. Awesome. We get that our constant difference must be 3. Awesome. So now that I know what the constant difference is, it also then allows me to solve for A. So A is equal to 32 minus 10 times 3. So A is going to be 32 minus 30. So your first term will be 2. All right, so the pattern is going um, to then a plus d, so 2 plus 3, 5, a plus 2d, a 2 plus 3 plus 3, 8. All right, and we keep going. So we actually need to answer the question in its entirety, calculate term 21. So whether now you actually just want to keep adding 3 until you get to the 21st term, I mean, that's fine. But I rate, I'm going to work out the general term for this pattern. Um, and then I can just sub 21 into n to find the value of term 21. Okay, so the general term for this pattern will be tn equals a plus n minus 1 times d. So therefore, term 21 is equal to 2 plus 21 minus 1 times 3. So that's going to be 2 plus um, 60. So your final answer is just 62. All right. Okay. Great lemons. Good job. So I know um, these questions, yeah, tricky, maybe. I don't really think so. It's brand new. So now when you look at it the first time, it seems a bit daunting. Um, but actually, it becomes quite straightforward. What's important that we have that basic knowledge foundation in our number patterns work that we understand our formulae and then these big questions become super accessible. All right, everybody, good job, congratulations, and have a lovely day further.